Good evening, respected delegates, my teachers, and my dear student friends. Uh, I am Rito Chopi from Punjabi University, Patiala. And today uh, I will be presenting on the topic discrimination of vermilion by ATR, FTIR, come chemometrics. So, vermilion sindur, as we all know, that it is used uh, extensively in Hindu marriages, ceremonies, and festivals. So, vermilion sindur, it can be encountered in murder and sexual assault cases. So, I have cited one case report, uh, which was reported from Delhi, and uh, which was uh, the case which was performed by Sinha S. et al. So in this case, uh, they have uh, compared some vermilion stains from the cloth of a husband, a male a guy who was alleged to have killed his wife. So using vermilion stain, uh, they were able to say that the stain on the husband clothes match is matching with the um, vermilion on the forehead of a girl. So in crime scene, it can provide a link between the suspect and the quotient item. So overall, the evidence can be used as associative evidence in the court of law. Associative evidence because vermilion, unlike like lipsticks or any other cosmetics, it is mass produced. And the chances is that false positive, false negative results can also be uh, found. So that's why it is always used as associative evidence in the court of law. So for my study, I have uh, purchased 17 brands of vermilion, uh, which is maroon in color. And I have uh, utilized ATR, FTR spectroscopy for analyzing these vermilion samples. So scan time was 64 scans and resolution was four centimeter inverse. So these parameters, it was all, uh, it stayed based on uh, optimizational studies that was carried out. So I have shown a figure, uh, a spectrum of a typical vermilion sample. So uh, say visually comparison, we can compare visually for a certain uh, spectrum, for a certain number of samples. But what if there is lots of samples? What if there is lots of spectrum? It becomes very difficult uh, to analyze visually. Also, the, there is chances of bias interpretation when we compare spectra visually. So that is why we have utilized chemometric methods. So I have used two chemometric methods. One is principal component analysis and one is LDA, that is linear discriminant analysis. Now principal component analysis, it can only be used for visualizing or it can be used for using a recognition of patterns in data. It doesn't give classification accuracy. PCA is not used for classification, but rather it is used for recognizing the patterns in the data set. So using PCA, uh, we can see ki, matlab, all the samples are uh, getting well separated, well discriminated. So uh, out of all the 17 brands, I have taken six samples which had triplicates. Triplicates in a sense, uh, three independent fresh samples. So I have used LDA to see how much classification is it getting correctly classified or not using these six samples. So using LDA, 100% classification accuracy was obtained. So overall, uh, it was also validated by analyzing some fresh lipsticks and all of it got correctly classified. So the current approach can aid investigative agencies to make quick assessment with regard to the source of origin. So for statistics, I have used Unscrambler, that is version 10.2. Thank you all of you.